Hey friends, welcome back to Whiskey and Wit. I'm Whitney and today is day three of the 12 days of Christmas. Today we are making a burlap farmhouse Christmas garland, two different ways. And you can honestly customize this for any style of decor that you have in your house. So let's get started. First, we're gonna create this kind of snow scene garland and I use as you can see red buffalo check ribbon but you could honestly use any kind of ribbon in here to match your decor that you would like. So the supplies I used for this one was some burlap and jute twine. I also grabbed some lights from the Dollar Tree, those little bulb ornaments, some wood snowflakes and some little trees. So the first step for both garlands is that you're going to want to create the actual burlap base. So the first step that I did is I took some Dollar Tree jute twine and I wrapped the ends with some scotch tape. The reason I do this is because it creates a stronger, firmer end on your jute twine and it's going to make it a lot easier to string it through the big burlap piece. And this big hunk of burlap was on super duper sale at Hobby Lobby. Um, I think they're $5.99 normally, but I got it in the fall clearance. So what you're going to want to do is take your little needle and thread and do a zigzag motion. So left to right diagonally. Um, so then that way you start getting that ruching texture. So you're going to go from the bottom left, up a little bit to the right, up a little bit to the left, so on and so forth. Once you get done with that, you're going to pull it um, so that you get that ruching. And you're really going to want to make it the length that you're looking for to fill whatever space. So I made them specifically to the two areas that I'm hanging them. So then for this particular one, I grabbed my Waverly chalk paint and I grabbed those wood cutouts from the Dollar Tree. And Michael's has a ton of these, which I'll show you later. So if you can't find them at the Dollar Tree, don't worry. Michael's has them on crazy sale. So I took my Waverly chalk paint, painted those two coats on either side. While those were drying, I took some iodized salt from the Dollar Tree and I put them into the bulbs to create a snow effect. And then I use these trees. I got these at Joann's. They were on super sale for Black Friday, but you can get them at Hobby Lobby. Um, some of the small Dollar Tree trees will work too. You just want to be able to fit them in. So as you saw, I had to pull off the bottoms of everything to get them to fit, but that was no big deal. So depending on the height of the tree, you can mess with it with your finger to get it to sit up or it'll sit like it just did on this one for me. But if for some reason it's being a pain, you can stick in a pencil or a pen or whatever will fit in there and get them to stand up and get them to stay. So then to finish off these bulbs, I used some red and white twine that I got from the crafting section at the Dollar Tree. Came in a pack of three. And I just added those to give it a little bit of a finished festive touch. So now to hang your garland. So I use these command strips that I got also at the Dollar Tree. You can see a theme here. And this is the shelving unit right underneath our TV. So I wanted to add a little bit of you know festiveness here so on either end of the garland I just tied loops um, so then that way I could hook it on either side and then I grabbed another command strip and hooked it in the center so it gave it kind of that swag look so then that way um, it wouldn't cover our TV box so then I took my dried snowflakes and dispersed them. I just tied them in and where I'm tying them is on to that center piece of jute twine. Um, don't tie it on the burlap because it's one going to be hard and two it's not going to stay. So you're going to find that opening and tie them. I just double knotted them on there. And then once those are on there, then I took my big bulbs. I hooked them on the three command strips. I made four of them, but I decided that the three was perfect. Um, so I've got another ornament for another tree. And then I went through with this buffalo check ribbon. You can honestly get this anywhere, but this was $1 at Dollar General, which was a great deal. Um, so I went through cut strips. I only need one. I only needed one of the um, rolls and I still have some left. And there you have it. It's super easy to do. Just a little bit of paint, a little bit of ruching on that base. And the sky is the limit. You can do this technique for any season. I did one for Halloween. Um, and that's what inspired me to make another one of these to replace that with. I also went through after the fact and looped in some of these warm yellow lights from the Dollar Tree. It's just a battery operated pack, two AA's. 
I hid it by our sound bar, but I think it just adds some nice glow um, to the space and it makes it feel a little bit more cozy. So I love how this one turned out. Up next is the second version of this garland. So you're gonna start with the same piece of burlap and create another base. And Sebastian wanted to make an appearance in this video. Um, for this one, instead of ribbon, I used a Dollar Tree scarf for the filler. And so I just went through and cut this up. You could definitely use any type of ribbon that you have. If you've got leftover fabric, you can really use what you have on hand, which is nice because I had some of these. Um, and then this also ties the garland into the greenery garland that I've tied scarves in from last year. So I really liked that it would kind of make it cohesive. So I grabbed some marsh green paint. Um, it's the same paint that I used in my Christmas vacation DIYs. I'll link those if you haven't seen them. And I painted my Christmas trees. Now these came from the Dollar Tree, but again, Michael's is where it's at. So I will link these down below if I can find them online, but I took my Crimson Waverly chalk paint and did a first coat on the reindeer. This pack of reindeer actually was awesome. It also came with some moose heads. I'm saving those for Little Man's Nursery, but um, you could definitely put those in there as well. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of Bob Ross action here to create the colors. So I'm gonna take that crimson that I just put on these reindeer, give myself a little bit on this plate. And then I'm also gonna do the same with that green color that I painted the trees as a base. So this is that marsh green. So I'm gonna give myself a little gray with this one. Give myself a little gray. Basically what you're trying to do is darken up the color so it still looks green and or red, um, but not super bright. The goal here with that darker red is to create vertical stripes. You want to space them out pretty evenly and I use the edge of my foam brush. You could use a smaller brush if you had it, but I just had this on hand so I decided to use it. And then once you've painted those lines, let that dry. I decided to make sure that all my reindeer were going one way with looking. Um, I painted both sides, but I just wanted to make sure that they were all cohesive. Once you have those other ones dry, then you're going to do the same thing horizontally. And then you're going to let those fully dry before you go in and finish the buffalo check. I did the same process for the trees, but I did a thicker plaid on this one. So I used the full width of my foam brush. Literally, I eyeballed this, but I literally did one thick strip down the center, and then I did the strips on the side, and then I eyeballed the horizontal ones too. I do have a video that shows how to do buffalo check if you'd much rather use some painter's tape. I will link that down below for you so you can use that instead, but I couldn't find my painter's tape, and I just wanted to get this done, and I think it turned out fine. <laughs> Uh, so then once you've got your vertical and horizontal stripes, let that thing dry. So after that dries, to finish off the buffalo check, I used some ink by Waverly. And I went through with a smaller paintbrush and painted all of the squares where the lines intersected with that black paint. Now as you can see, I'm not being super, super clean with my painting. Um, that's because of the smaller ones you can't really tell. I took a lot more time with the trees, but basically you're looking for wherever those lines intersect, you're painting it black. So then I went through, finished all of those, and then let them completely dry. And it was time to hang this garland. So same process as last time, I grabbed two command strips and then tied off loops on either end so that they would hang made sure that it was fluffed, and then I went through with all of those scarf strips that I cut before, and I tied them in, um, I wanted to make sure it was full, but I also didn't want to overload it, and then I went through with all of the openings in between the scarves and alternated the red and green reindeer and trees just to fill out the garland. Now this look is a little bit different than the first one. I love how full it is, how rustic and kind of wildernessy it looks. And I think this will look really good in Little Man's Nursery come next year. But for right now, it's gonna hang out in my living room because as you can see in the mirror, that whole mantle is where the rest of my scarf garland is. And so it all ties together. I love this from literally just a glance, you can't tell that 
the buffalo check was free-handed and I love that. Thank you so much for watching. I will be sure to link the 12 Days of Christmas playlist at the end of this video as well as down below so you can check out the other two videos if you're watching this when it goes up or all the other videos if you're catching this a little later in the game. Be sure to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Wit video including the rest of the 12 Days of Christmas and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!